So as I mentioned once before, uh, I always had a lot of problems <laughs> managing the transition from inside the Gans room to outside. Because, um, you know, in the original, it's it's very slow. You know, that whole, like, transporting sequence where they disappear little by little. And it's it was really tough to, to you know, not have it be totally jarring. Oh, I guess they're outside now. Uh, without just slowing down the whole flow of the episode. I think this is one of the, the better solutions that I found to that, though. Uh, this was always one of my favorite jokes. Uh, the, yeah, the rest of the times that I did that wound up kind of clumsy. I could just sit down and watch this intro for days. Look at this shit. When I... <laughs> most abridged series that I watch, I skip the intro. I never skip the intro when I'm rewatching Gantz. Such good shit. Um, so here comes, uh, I think my first guest voice in the series, besides myself and Cassius, uh, which is Masako X reprising his role as Rock Lee for the Rock Lee, the Robo Rock Lee, uh, alien here. Uh, interestingly, I actually saw Gantz before seeing any Naruto, and so for the longest time, I, I called Rock Lee that one Gantz guy, because <laughs> I thought that they looked alike. Um, so from, yeah, day one, I knew, oh, I've got to get Masako to voice this character. Now, this bit with the light is uh, straight out of the anime, which is pretty funny. <laughs> it's so stupid. Yeah, he won't jaywalk, right? It's brilliant. Uh, but right here, uh, I, I fuck up. I just reversed the previous clip. Oops. <laughs> red lights don't turn yellow before they turn green. They just go right from red to green. Burr, stupid! I realized that about two seconds <laughs> after uploading this. Uh, this little scene came from another episode altogether. Uh, I didn't have anything to, to use it for in that episode where it was actually featured. Oh, and the uh, Nazi Barbara Streisand came from G Gundam Abridged, I think? Um, Kaiser Neko uh, uh, sent that to me because um, he was the one who made it uh, for the G Gundam guys uh, at Idlet Studios. And he sent it to me saying, dude, check this out, check out what I did. And so I had it on my desktop. And then, like, months later, I'm trying to find another image to censor some nudity here. And I'm like, oh, this is a funny image. Oh, wait, this was for G Gundam. And I found out that they hadn't used it yet, so I asked if I could use it. And they're like, uh, uh, can we use it first? <laughs> it, it is ours. He did make it for us. So I waited, and I used another... <laughs> one at the time, and then <laughs> waited until this episode <laughs> to use that until they'd already used it once, because I didn't want to jack their image <laughs> without their permission. Uh, <laughs> everybody got a big kick out of hearing Masako talk about human testicles. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, this whole bit about happy thoughts and, and him fighting uh, uh, Emo was... Um, you know, I had the had the whole singing the, the to the tune of Frere Jaca. Uh, th that one was uh, one of the first times, I think, where I actually uh, really felt the limitations of the editing software that I was using at the time, which was Ulead. Um, the, the whole scene was really ambitious in my head. I wanted to, you know, not only do the singing and do a round, um, I was gonna gonna make it this whole, like, karaoke thing and, and actually, like, show the words uh, on the screen. Kind of do like what I did in Berserk uh, Abridged Episode 6, where it would just be a black screen with a little portrait of each character, and then their verse would show up with, like, a little bouncing ball so you could sing along, and it would be this whole, like, elaborate thing. Uh, and I might have been able to do it uh, 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 with you, Lead, but it would have been a righteous pain in the ass, taking up so many uh, workarounds and... Uh, God. It would have delayed the whole episode by, God, months, probably. So finally I said, fuck it, I'll do as best I can and I'll move on. If I were to do that sequence again today, uh, with Vegas and with the editing skills that I've picked up since then, it would look a lot better. But, oh well. <laughs> I was never quite happy with that scene, but... <laughs> I, I, this scene, on the other hand, I did like very much with the ACDC in there. That one I was quite happy with, so I guess it does all balance out. Um, I did like bringing back Kato's uh, Star Trek fandom, because I had such a hard time with Kato's character, because he was such a... You know, his whole thing was that he was bland. Uh, <laughs> but then what do you do after that? So I decided that being a Trekkie was like the blandest form of nerddom I could think of. And then I did that <laughs> a little bit where the guy gets punched for pointing out the obvious nitpick 
um, which was there pretty much that I wouldn't get 50,000 comments saying, mm, dude, Ang Lee can't use no jutsus. It's like, yes, I get that, but it's unavoidable, so fuck you, I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> I'll knock your fucking tooth out if you have a problem with it. <laughs> now this uh, spoof here was um, of this whole talk about philosophy and <laughs> whether it's morally right to save him and yada yada uh, was, I, I think... Probably even including the filler ending, the worst part of the anime. Fucking took up, like, half the episode. Uh, uh, and it was so dumb, and it was all filler, by the way. Uh, that red-headed, uh, uh, thug's character was way different in the manga. Uh, he was not this, like, slightly sympathetic dude who, you know, yeah, he's a thug, but he has a family, and yada yada, and, and... His heart's really in the right place, and no, he was a fucking rapist and and a bastard in the manga. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and it was uh, this was another one of those scenes where it's like, okay, how long can I go on, and what can I do, and and I mean the whole thing, you know, was uh, was also a very pragmatic uh, thing in that it let me, uh, it allowed me to have Nishi die off screen which I thought was very necessary, because Nishi dies in a very gruesome manner, which is just not funny, <laughs> if you're looking right at it. This was one of my favorite stingers, too. I, I thought I did a, a pretty decent job with the editing here. All right, take it easy. I'll see you next time.